all right so the structure of this video and uh, how it's going to go is we're first going to be looking at some reviews and documentation then we're going to head over to the unboxing and then we're going to do the software setup we're going to make the connections in the hardware setup and then finally we're going to run the example code all right guys so for the technical information setup we're just going to be looking at the reviews first and then we're going to go ahead and jump into the data sheets look at the data sheets and then after that we'll jump into the software uh so here i'm on the micro center website this is where you can pick up this display for 20 bucks and if you look at the reviews they're not that good i mean five people rated it one star so let's go read some of them this guy says box has no info on it so I had to find it on the website to even get the resolution. This is true. The, the box has no information on it. You'll see in a second when I do the unboxing. Uh, this guy says, Inland, stop selling products without technical information. This is somewhat true. Uh, Inland does have some documentation with some of their products. It's just that this one doesn't have any. Um, now this guy here, this review is... Uh, uh, he, he, he goes pretty hard on them. Uh, the documentation for this is in English and the screenshots appear to be in an Asian language, maybe Chinese. The other libraries I could find were out of date. You could use some sketchy software to convert BMP into binary, then copy and paste the C class code into, into your code. This is pretty much useless for anything besides cycling through some in images. If you're looking for an easy to use e-paper e display, pass on this one. Now, I can only imagine that what he's referring to is the technical information that is posted in the Q&A, which is this link right here. And if we go to that link, here's where it takes you to. And I believe this is the manufacturer for the display. Again, it's pretty similar. So you can see the only difference is really the color of the display and maybe, I don't know. <laughs> the this one has black connectors that one has yellow connectors that's that's it's just the color of the pcb that's different uh but if you scroll down i can only assume he's talking about this software it the screenshots are in chinese but th this software image to lcd if when you download it it's going to be in english it's it's not going to be in chinese and if you want to convert your own images into a BMP, you can. You can even use Microsoft Paint. You don't have to use Image to LCD, but Image to LCD is the easiest way to do it. And I'll show you guys how to use Image to LCD in a later video when we upload our own custom images. Now, one thing that you want to keep in mind is when you get this e paper display, it has two switches one right here and one right here. And right here, it talks about them. You know, the, the first switch. Uh, must be slid to the three position adjusting it to 0.47 this just is the display brightness and then uh, one thing I like about this display actually is that you can actually choose which logic level to operate it at so this is 5 volt and it has a 3.3 .3 volt switch so for most microcontrollers you're going to be on 3.3 .3 volts but since we're going to be running it off a of Raspberry Pi uh, we're going to be using 5 volts so I'm going to just slide that to the 5 volts when I switch my camera over to the Raspberry Pi here you guys will be able to see that and here, you know, if you just Google image to LCD, you can download image to LCD. I downloaded it. I used it. I can say that, you know, it's a great software. It works great. Uh, but to actually drive this display, we're going to be using the drivers made by Waveshare. Now, Waveshare makes little hats for the Raspberry Pi. And what that means is they just sit on top of whatever you have. So if you have like a microcontroller here, then it will just sit on top of that. And that's what like a hat is. Uh, but they have you know a lot of technical information here the ones you want to pay attention to is this right here You want to pay attention to that little chart that you see right there uh, And this will give you the pinout on how to connect your Raspberry Pi to your e-paper display The uh, way I'm doing it is I'm using these little connectors here with these ends And I'm going to connect it to my Raspberry Pi and you'll see that here in a minute uh, and so now we're going to head into the software setup of the tutorial and I'll see you guys there. All right. So let's say that you bought one of these, one of these 2.13 inch displays. Uh, so what you can expect to see in the box, you can see this one's a little rough because I've just had it for such a long time. Uh, so once you first open this up, I'm not kidding when I say that what you see on the box is what you get. You just get the display 
and nothing else. No documentation, nothing. It's just the display wrapped in a piece of foam. So there it is. That's what we're going to be driving today. Inland also does sell a 1.54 inch display and this one comes with standoffs. Um, I just I lost them because I opened this display up a pretty pretty long time ago and uh, it's just been sitting on the shelf and I finally got around to driving that one as well. But this is not what we're going to be looking at today. This is what we're going to be looking at driving and I just wanted to show you that yeah if you buy this display you're just, that's it you're just getting the display and nothing else. Alright, so here I'm in Putty and everyone knows it's a must that when you're doing anything coding related, you gotta have some coffee. So we're just gonna take a couple sips and we're gonna get right into it. So the first thing that you wanna do um, is obviously head into the terminal of your Raspberry Pi. Uh, if you're working straight off the Raspberry Pi desktop, then I recommend that you hit Control alt t and that'll actually bring up the terminal and the way i'm doing it here is i'm doing it through putty uh, with ssh uh, if you don't know how to do that then you can just look up another tutorial on how to do that uh, they can explain it way better than i can i'm just going to show you how to download the drivers and some examples and get your display up and running so the first thing you're going to want to do is you're going to want to enable the spy interface how you do that is you type sudo raspi config that'll bring that up and then we're going to go to interface options because that's how you know interface the display with the pi and then you're going to go spy would you like the spy interface to be enabled we're going to hit yes we do and then we're going to wait the spy interface has been enabled great uh, and then we're going to say you know we are done and so spy interface is enabled that's great now I'm going to paste these commands in the description below because you're going to want to follow them very carefully. Uh, what I recommend you do is I'm going to put a link in the description that um, takes you to the Raspberry Pi Imager website. And what that does is that's how you load the image into the SD card for the Raspberry Pi. I recommend you download the one with the recommended software. This already has everything you need included which is the one I used for this Raspberry Pi, but it's a good idea to check. So the first thing you're gonna to wanna to do is do the sudo apt get update, and then you know it's gonna update all the packages. So we're just gonna give that a minute. It should be pretty fast. Take a little coffee break in between. And then the next thing where you want to install is pip. So sudo apt get install python3 pip python3 because that's uh, what we're going to be using. And right here it says, you know, I already have it installed, but if you didn't have it installed, if you didn't download that full uh, image with the software, then it's going to ask you for a prompt it's going to say do you want to install and you just type you know why hit enter and then uh, you will install it and then the next thing you want to install is a uh, pil which i assume is pillow which is what you need to you know draw images on your display so pillow again we're going to go through all of this it's going to say i already have it because i already installed it but you know for you to follow along follow along excuse me uh, I'm gonna redo it all so then sudo apt get install python3 numpy again we're just gonna clear and then sudo pip3 install rpy.gpio This might take a little while. Uh, well, so we're just gonna wait. There you go. It says the requirement has already been satisfied because I already did this. And then we're gonna do sudo pip three install spydev. 
Okay. We're going to wait for that. Already satisfied. That's great. And now we're going to download the um, the drivers for the display and you want to make them into a you want to basically you want to copy that directory into a separate folder that you know you're going to use. You can just do it straight off the console, but uh, the way you do that is basically we're going to list everything we have here and you can see I already made a directory called projects. If you don't have a directory called projects, you type make directory and then you know projects and then that'll make the project directory so we're just gonna see what's in projects uh, and then you can see right there I made another folder called ePaper again you just do and make directory and then ePaper and then there you go um, but we're just gonna head into ePaper and then <laughs> And there's another folder in there called ePaper, so we're just gonna uh, go in there into ePaper, and then we're gonna list what's in there. And then here is where that um, where that repository for all the drivers is. So how you get all that in there is we're just gonna back up just one um, one directory above, and you're gonna want to type this in. So we're going to copy this right there. So that's the link you're going to want to put after you make all your directories is get the drivers from the GitHub link, sudo git clone GitHub wave share ePaper. That's what's going to make the ePaper folder that you can, uh, this one right here, you can see on the screen. Once that's done, we just head into that ePaper folder. That's the only one that's there. Then we list, and then since we're gonna be doing it with Raspberry Pi, we're gonna head into the Raspberry Pi, and then we're gonna list again, and then we're gonna be running uh, Python because that's what we installed, we installed Python 3. So then we're gonna go ahead into the Python directory, and then we're there, then we're gonna list again, and then we want to run some examples. So we're gonna go into examples, uh, there we go, and then we're gonna list, and then there, all your examples for every single display that you need so here's the 1.54 inch display the one the 2.13 inch display which is the one that we need however you do need to make sure that since the display that you got from micro center is a monochrome display meaning it's only two colors that's black and white that the one you choose is one that does not have a letter after the number those are all the other models that WaveShare makes that have colors in them like red and I think yellow I don't I don't remember uh, but make sure that the example that you are going to run doesn't have a letter because then you know you'll it'll run the code will run but you know it's gonna look a little sketch so after that uh, we're gonna head into the hardware setup and I'm gonna record me connecting this to my Raspberry Pi once we connect to the Raspberry Pi then we're gonna run some examples and uh, we'll go from there Okay, and we're back. So I already have VCC and ground hooked up. Uh, you might you want to make sure that your VCC dip switch is in the correct orientation. So if you're using five volts, flip it to the five volt side. If you're using three volts, flip it to the three volt side, and so on. You can see I added that resistor and those pins there. Yeah, that's just to hold the display in place. It's uh, they're not really there doing anything. It's just to kind of lock it in. And right now what I'm doing is I'm pulling up the pin out for the Raspberry Pi because I don't remember uh, what all those pins do. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to speed the video up uh, while I make these connections and I'll see you in a little bit. Alright, so now that we have made our hardware connections, 
now we can actually get to running some examples so I'm still in the library here I didn't close out and what you're gonna want to do is you're gonna want to type to Python 3 because we're gonna be using Python to run this display EPD and then uh, one inch uh, 13 and then let's go with the V oh that's 12 13 yes V capital V 3 why is it not auto EPD 1 inch 13 oh that's why it's not 1 inch it's 2 inch what are we doing uh, test out PY oh you, you can't really see let me just get my uh, camera out of the way now so now you can see that it auto completed test out py and then we're going to write and uh, run it there we go and there you can see uh i'll put the video up somewhere where you can uh see that the display is actually working so that's how you get the display to work uh of course i'm going to run one more example here just so you can look at it um but yeah it's it's just that easy i mean it's not even that hard but all you need is a little time, a little patience, and uh, a lot of coffee. <sighs> All right, guys. So, you know, that's it for this tutorial. I'll catch you guys on the next one. Peace.